Well, in the next few weeks, the boys and myself have got a bit of an adventure planned. We're backpacking into the Victorian high country chasing Samba deer. Now, we're going to spend a week away, and to say I'm excited is a bit of an understatement. And uh, today I thought I'd take the opportunity to come out and go through some of my gear and just work out what I'm going to take, what I'm going to leave. And it's always sort of that undecided, will I, won't I. But I'm going to try to keep this as short as possible and I'm going to talk about a few things. One, some of the new gear I'm going to try and take and see what it's like. Uh, a lot of it will be orientated around some of what's becoming more of a, I won't say a necessity, but something of a modern uh, need. And that is to charge all our modern paraphernalia, whether it's phones, GPS, cameras, whatnot. So that is one of the issues that I've got when I'm away for a week, um, is how I'm going to do all this. So this will be a bit of a challenge, and one I'll show you some of the products I'm going to try to actually get me by for that period. But one thing that I think is overlooked quite a bit when you hear people talking about what goes in their backpacks and what gear they take away when they're hunting, and uh, besides the food and dietary requirements of every individual, I think the key part when you go away hunting is to look after yourself, the hunter. And I mean getting a good night's sleep, uh, good footwear, everything you can possibly do to make you look after yourself, keep yourself in as best possible condition as you can. Because I can assure you, you will hunt better if you wake up after having a really good night's sleep. Now, in this situation for this week, I had a couple of options. I could have taken my bivy with a lighter weight um, bag, or sorry, lighter weight sleeping bed. Now, just for comparison here, that, they're both x -peds. This is the Synmat, which is basically a synthetic, uh, about seven meter, seven meter, seven centimeter thick. And this is the Hyperlight LW. Now that's okay and it does the job and it is obviously smaller than this one but the bottom line is to me when i'm going away for a week again we get back to comfort this is the x-ped down mat and it's all lw the long wide and it's nine centimeters thick it is absolutely fantastic synthetic is okay but the down once it's inflated and you inflate it by using your hands um, the disadvantage with this is you cannot use your own breath to inflate it. If you do, you will ruin the down inside it. Um, this you can inflate by mouth, and obviously it is lighter, it is smaller. But in all fairness, this is a massive improvement, and you will sleep far better. The warmth you get under your back, when you include that with a good down sleeping bag, and I always use down sleeping bags with a good liner because you just cannot beat them. The only downside, pardon the pun, is that if they do get wet, you're in a bit of trouble. So you need to keep it dry. And in this case, look, I could take the bivy, a good Gore-Tex bivy. This may be a small tarp and I'd be good to go. But it doesn't give me the freedom if you really get some poor weather that you can sort of hibernate quite comfortably for a day or two or whatever you've got to do. So I will be taking the larger of the two mats, uh, definitely in my opinion far superior in comfort. Now a good two man sleeping bag, whatever brand suits you, it's up to yourself. We're going to try these uh, One Planet, this is a Gundy 2 which is a three to four season I believe. Uh, the other thing that you really, uh, again, when you come back after a hard day's hunting, you want to be comfortable when you get back, you get a campfire going if you're going to, and, and sit back and relax. Now, how do you carry a decent chair in? And I think you want something with a bit of back support. Now, for ages there's been people talking about, oh, you know, the Helinox, uh, I believe that's how you pronounce it. But LD also do a chair that's virtually the same. And I've had uh, one or two for the last few years. And I will grab them out here. Now, this here is three chairs. Two basically identical, except for one that's been used for the last couple of years. This is the new Helinox, which is the Chair Zero, which is the smallest of them. And you can see in comparison when it's packed up, uh, that's the oldie one, which is basically a copy of the larger Helinox. Uh, Look, in my opinion, 
these are roughly a quarter of the cost in comparison to these. Now I've done a few tests and whatever on them, and this is my old one now, and it's basically getting to the stage where it's just about buggered. The sort of the material is delaminating. Um, another area they have problems with them is where the poles go into the actual material. They do tend to push through. I have stuck small bits of leather in there over the years to actually reduce this happening. But for the money, for what, $30 Australian, they're not bad at all. Uh, this is a new one I just picked up the other day, again, an Aldi one. Uh, so you can see the size comparison between the two. But in my opinion, I'm going to give this Helinox a go because one thing I will say, um, besides the base of it and the aluminium and the structure of it, looks almost identical to me. But the material that they use actually on the seat is actually looks superior to me. Um, and we will find out over a period of a week. Either way, coming back, sitting down uh, and being comfortable, again, helps to you resting and being ready for the next day. Now, good pillow. These are a handy little pillow. Uh, it's a little Cedar Summit Aero pillow. And they come in a few different sizes. This one here is a large. And I find this is quite comfortable. Um, and it is actually quite easy to inflate. Um, I will get it out and just show you. <laughs> this might be a little bit embarrassing, but we'll give it a crack. But that's basically it. You can... Easy as that. You've got a half decent sized pillow. Uh, and they are, look, you have to muck around with getting the air uh, pressure about right. But to me, these are probably one of the best options. Now, so after you've got your bedding, uh, the next thing I think is you want to take care of yourself wherever you can. And one, any product that I can find that I believe will actually help me look after myself, I'm going to have a crack at using it or buying it. Now, one of these is something that I've sort of been looking at for quite a while. And I'd never been able to find, I think, surely someone makes a disposable waiter. I think at those times you get across an uh, icy cold creek or river, yeah, look, most of us just go straight through it and they get wet and you dry out over a period of day. But what happens when you come back at the end of the day and the river's right on your camp, you know you're going to get soaking wet and then you're going to go back to camp and you're going to have to dry yourself out. So I thought I'm going to try and find a product that helps me from getting absolutely soaked now, these things here are called Wiggies waders. And basically what happens with these is you just slip them over your boots, your pants, a whole lot, and then you just hook this up onto your belt loops on each side of your pants. Now I've heard mixed reviews on these, some good, some bad. I believe the newer versions have improved. Well, these are going to get a fair run when I go away, and we'll see if they're worth the money. Right, now, another thing, I'm not a big fan, well I won't say, I shouldn't say, I'm not a big user of these walking poles, but this one, this one, has actually impressed me quite a bit, Lee tends to use them a bit and he probably got me onto them, but when you're using, uh, when you're carrying your backpack, and you've got 20 or 30 kilos in there, um, these things can save you, especially your knees, um, you lose your balance or something, or you're going down a hill, you can sort of put this down in front of you. So it's not an essential, but I personally think, uh, this one's made by Black Diamond, it's called a Z-Pole, and what I really like about it, is not only that it's sort of quite compact and light, is that it opens up and locks in through this little button here, really quick. Then you can adjust it, to your length and you know where you can go back to quite easily. Now they, I think you have to buy, actually I know you have to buy these in a pair, um, but that's no big deal. I usually just have one. I don't use it all the time, but it is handy to have. Right, now, good night's sleep. If you're around snorers, or if the wind comes up, or the rain gets heavy on your tent, 
just a simple, simple little twist disposable earplugs. Put in your put in your ears before you go to sleep can be the difference from getting another hours not or even two or three hours extra night's sleep. Again, simple little things, and in my opinion, essential. Now we're going to move on to some of the new products I'm going to try and some that I have used. And uh, one of them is this look, we all use headlamps when we go away and look. I like to keep them simple and in all fairness I've had the um, Petzl's before and the Tikas before but this is a new little one and it's called the uh, Tika Hybrid and one of the boys was using this and I'm thinking what's that little green thing glowing around his head when he's got it off and I reckon this is a cool idea and basically what it is is once you turn it on you're probably not going to see this once I turn it off but once the light obviously reacts with this outer ring and when you turn it off this will actually glow. Now I'm not sure if you can pick that up, but of a night, this thing will be glowing. And if you've got it down beside you in your bed, you have no problem trying to locate your torch or your headlamp, whatever you want to call it. But that's a fantastic little thing. Now I think even on maximum power, I think the three AAA batteries last about 60 hours out of this. So you'd say it sort of take two or three sets of AAA batteries and you're going to be good for a week. And they're not the most powerful, but they are more than adequate for normal hunting situations, in my opinion. All right, now, this is probably not gonna worry a lot of people, but it does concern me, is obviously I'm gonna to have to take a fair bit of camera gear in, uh, radios, GPS, well, actually, I'm gonna try and avoid taking my GPS this year. I'm actually gonna take my iPhone in and use Mud Maps 3 and give that a fair crack because I reckon it's a really good product. Um, the big issue you've got when you're actually going to be in for that time is going to be charging everything. Now I'm trying to take in everything that will charge via USB. Now I'm going to try a newer product. Uh, this is made by a company called Anker. Uh, A-N-K-E-R, they get a pretty good review, actually they get really good reviews. Now this is uh, one of their battery packs, their battery packs, and this is the biggest one in the portable size and it's 26,800 milliamp hours, uh, which will basically charge an iPhone 6 for a full charge on this for about, I think about nine times, which is pretty good. Three USB outs, but what I do like about this and what sold it for me is it's got two uh, micro USB inputs that basically allow you to charge it twice as fast because I think the maximum output as far as current capability of a USB output is 2.1 amps, I think. So basically, if you've got two power sources, you can charge this with two individual 2.1 maximum current rated outputs. So you're gonna charge it twice as quick as you possibly could if you only had one which to me is something I thought was very, very handy. Now, what am I gonna charge it with? Anchor also make 20 watt solar panels, which can be even strapped to your backpack while you're walking. You don't have to use a power back, power pack, battery back, battery pack, whatever you wanna call it. These you can actually plug directly into your iPhone or most USB powered appliances and it will sense it and regulate the current flow accordingly and charge them on the go, which I thought was a really cool idea. So the best part about this is I've got two of these. So all up, those two there and my battery, my battery pack it's not that heavy, heavy, I'd say it's probably around the one kilo mark all up. That will hopefully suffice for my charging needs. I'm yet to find a UHF radio above two watts that will actually charge uh, off USB. I'm still searching for that and if I find something I think is really good I'll let you know. Now the other issue for me obviously is I'm going to need to be able to have a week's uh, a lot of video footage between sort of two and three, maybe possibly four cameras. So how am I going to store all that video information? Well, this is a new product for me, probably not so new for most 
photographers, videographers, but this hopefully will be my saviour. Now basically what this is, is a portable hard drive, but it's self-powered. Not only is it self-powered, it's wireless. And the key for me, is it has an SD slot in the side. Now they make them in one, two, three, and four terabyte sizes. And I actually purchased a two terabyte, which I think is gonna be just about spot on for me. Now from a single charge, it will last up to 10 hours and basically give you a, an idea of how much charge is left in it. Now, besides the key point, which I'll mention in a moment, this also can be used to charge your appliances. If you've got, if you're at the end of the week, uh, you're running low on that power source or your power supplies, you can use this USB output here from the internal battery to charge your phones and so on, which I think is a great idea. But the best part of it for me is at the end of each day, I plug my SD card out of my cameras into here. It automatically dumps it under the hard drive, automatically keeps it with its own individual name, date and whatever. And even if you sort of update, put the card in at lunchtime and then put it in at the end of the day, it doesn't recopy the whole lot. It just tops up what was in there. So I'm putting a lot of faith in this because over a week, at the end of every day, I'm gonna be probably putting in two or three SD cards and dumping everything onto this hard drive. But when you come back, you can basically just plug this straight into your computer like a normal portable hard drive and read straight from it. I think it's a fantastic idea. Um, hopefully, that's in theory at this stage. Hopefully, it's gonna do the job because I'm really gonna to need to rely on this. So, anyway, I'm sort of going through some of these products that I think are really good value for money or can be not essential, but can make your life easier. One last thing is obviously a tripod. Now I'd love to take my spotting scope, my big spotting scope, I'd love to take all my gear in, but it's just not gonna be practical. So a good carbon fiber tripod is the go. Now this brand, again, probably Chinese, actually it is Chinese, Zomei. One of the days you have to spend five, six hundred, over a thousand dollars to get a good carbon fibre tripod, weighing in around one and a half kilos. This thing has impressed me. It's not something that I would probably uh, use for spotting uh, or anything like that, but, but you could change it. It's got a ball head standard. The quick release is probably not the best of the lot that I've seen, but it's functional, it's cheap. I think I paid around $160 for this delivered. And it is as good so far as some of the ones that I've paid a lot more for. So this will be interesting to see how good this is. Uh, something that a lot of people use and a lot of people need to try and cut down the weight on. And in my case, um, this will be an essential piece of gear and is going to get a fair bit of use. So anyway, I think I've rambled on enough. Uh, hopefully I haven't bored you to tears. We're as keen as mustard to do this trip and I just thought that, yeah, I'd speak a little bit about some of the gear I'm gonna take in and if you've got any questions or anything you want me to sort of test out or ask me what we use or whatever, uh, or you can tell me we're doing it wrong like many of you are quite keen to do. But um, yeah, looking forward to this trip and hopefully I'll get some good video to share.